RKC Waldbeek of Holland, the opponents, at home next Sunday. Bryn Law, Sky Sports. South Bradford's European adventure rolls happily on. Their third win on the trot in the Intertoto Cup. He might be the favourite with the bookies to be the first managerial casualty of the season, but so far so good for Chris Hutchings. Delighted to get uh, the three wins, but the most important thing is uh, getting through in the competition. And um, I was pleased today that we didn't concede any goals. And how much are you using this as a way of getting yourselves ready for the Premiership? Obviously, it's a bonus that you can actually reach the UEFA Cup if you go all the way. But first things first, it's helping to get your players ready for the Premiership, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we're all working towards that. But, uh, you know, it, with this competition, there's a huge carrot at the end of it. And we, we, we want to do well in it, that's for sure. After dominating the first half without creating many clear-cut chances, it was Dino at the double in the second. Just enough purchase to beat Rob van Dijk with this header and just enough power to beat the keeper from the penalty spot. It's just nice to get goals. You know, that's what you play football for. That's what I play football for anyway. And, uh, you know, but most importantly for, for the club, you know, we've got the result what we needed. You know, obviously, it's going to be an hard game going back to their place next Saturday. Um, but we've got a good uh, two-goal cushion now and you know, we'll build on that. 2-0, but it could have been much more, couldn't it, really? Well, I thought we could have had three or four, to be quite honest. In the first half, I think Dean Windass again had three or four shots and, and didn't hit the target with them. And he was, he was disappointed at half-time. But uh, in saying that, we're delighted with the 2-0 scoreline. And uh, we go out there, um, we won't be taking them lightly. And it's going to be a tough job. It's only half-time at the moment. The Bradford faithful got their first view of Hutchings' summer signings. Ex-Wednesday duo Ian Nolan and Peter Atherton started and looked comfortable at the back. David Hopkins' second-half arrival off the bench brought the biggest cheer of the day from the crowd of nearly 8,500. Ian and Peter started and got the 90 minutes under their belt, and I was delighted for them. And um, Hoppy, you know, played the 30 minutes, um, but we was always going to do that with Hoppy as he was a little bit behind well, the rest of the boys on the fitness stakes, and we felt it would be better give him the last 30 minutes than, than start him and, and him try and pace himself and maybe not get the fitness under his belt. So um, delighted he got through the last 30 minutes for us. Aidan Davison's diving stop in the final minute denied Volvic an undeserved away goal, ensuring the Bradford boys take a 2-0 lead with them to Holland next Saturday. Their mini-European tour should last a while longer yet. Martin Fisher, Sky Sports. He ensured further progress and more European trips on their intertoto adventure with a competent, if unspectacular, win in southern Holland. A legal's goal 10 minutes from time was enough to secure for them a 3-0 aggregate victory and a tie against St. Petersburg to be played next Wednesday. Stuart McCall and Dean Saunders sat this game out. David Hopkin made his first start. And generally, the English side were in control against fairly ordinary opponents. Gary Walsh made a couple of good saves in the closing stages, but it should have all been over long before then. Dean Windus missed a penalty, the fourth in successive games that Bradford had been awarded at the start of the second half. Ultimately, it didn't matter, as Lee Mills made sure of that. The only downside, David Wetherill stretched it off, but he should be fit in time for that next trip. That's next Tuesday that Bradford City fly out. Bryn Law for... As soon as he arrived, the Bantam's boss was getting some inside information on St. Petersburg from an unlikely source. All the Russian people uh, support uh, Manchester, Arsenal, Liverpool, or maybe Chelsea, but not so much. And But not Bradford or Coventry City or any uh, little team. But for me, Bradford is the best. <laughs> Meanwhile, the players were soaking up the sights of the elegant city. It seems very nice. Um, it's a very scenic building to look at and uh, we're in a lovely hotel. So, uh, yeah, very nice. You're not telling me now footballers are into architecture and culture, are you? Well, of course, yeah, some of us are. Now, most people would agree that football has undergone a major revolution in the past decade, but it was right here on this battleship back in October 1917 that the first shots were fired in the biggest revolution of them all. Now the sights of St. Petersburg's turbulent past, especially the elegant Winter Palace, are what brings the millions of tourists to the city every year. <laughs> The big attraction last night, though, was undoubtedly the visit of Bradford City. After relatively low-key matches in Lithuania and Holland, St. Petersburg was a whole new ball game as the colourful and noisy Zenit fans streamed into the Petrovsky Stadium. Oh! I can't believe how many people have turned out for it. I think it's gone from this uh, Mickey Mouse Cup all of a sudden to something deadly serious, hasn't it? They're going to struggle to be heard, to be quite honest. There's only 12 supporters and officials, but we're confident. It was certainly an St. Petersburg, city of the Tsars, formerly known as Petrograd and then Leningrad, nearly 300 years old, crammed with history and jammed with traffic. 
some of which looked as though it had been built by St. Peter himself. Only 15 Bradford fans made the long trip to follow their team, and not necessarily from Yorkshire. This team is a, is a favorite for me. I don't like. Uh, I don't know how it's explained because they play the best football for me. They could uh, and they uh, they play with the heart. Uh. Luckily, there was a midnight bus leaving Helsinki. Got to uh, St. Petersburg at 7:30 in the morning, uh, passing through about five Russian borders. Never far from a money deal, the city chairman went on walkabout ahead of the match. After all, when abroad, it would be a shame not to go shopping. It's the only time I ever do a bit of shopping, because I never shop at home, but uh, I, I like to take a present or two back. First, though, the match. FC Zenit enjoys a passionate, rowdy following. And that upfront, in-your-face support is reflected on the field. So it wasn't too surprising that Bradford went behind after 15 minutes, with Gaby Karazov the first to react to Koblev's initial shot. City survived further scares from the Russians, and in the second half had their chances to win the game. Malafaya saving well from Lee Mills, and even better from Dean Windus, who nearly squeezed in an away goal with the very last kick of the match. I would have thought second half, I mean Mills is one-on-one uh, -on -one with a keeper, and, and Dean Saunders has had a chance with a header, and Dean Windus um, you know, keep us brought up a fine save in, in the last few seconds there. So, um, you know, we've got to take positives out of it and learn from what, what happened today. And with new ideas for pre-match entertainment ringing in their ears, Bradford City bade farewell to Russia. Derm Tanner, BBC Look North. New million pound signing Dan Petrescu will now have to wait at least another season if he's to play in Europe with the Bantams. Bradford were well and truly outclassed over the two legs of their semi-final, although Lee Mills's header could have levelled the scores on aggregate. But the tie was over when the Russians scored an away goal, Ugarov pouncing on Matt Clark's parry. Joy for the travelling Zenit supporters, who only just outnumbered the 12 Bantams fans that had travelled to Russia last week. Ugarov controversially doubled his and Zenit's tally from close range. McCall and Atherton weren't happy that the linesman had first raised, then lowered his flag. The weather was doing its best to produce a perfect storm, the City were given a perfect lesson in pacey counter-attacking. Tarasov finishing a superb move. The Compton passing side, not only that, they had Pierce to burn. Uh, the, the lad that came on up front, very, very good player and uh, skillful as well. They're too quick and they can't do anything against them kind of players. So St. Petersburg and their fans are off to sunny Spain for the final against Celta Vigo, whilst for Bradford... We've got a game on Friday um, against Altrincham away. And then we've got a game against Grimsby on Tuesday. So, uh, you know, that's two games that we'll be looking forward to.